Okay, so last time out, we reviewed the first ever episode of WWE's ECW, and it was pretty shit. The show officially ended on February 16th, 2010. But what I want to know is, in four years and 193 episodes later, did it get any better? Join me today as we take a look back at the last ever episode of WWE's ECW. The first thing to note is that they're doing a video package at the top of the show where they're showing clips from the original ECW, as if WWE's version and the OG are actually related in any way whatsoever. Christian is our current ECW world champion, and he's going to be putting the title on the line in the main event tonight in an Extreme Rules match against Ezekiel Jackson. An important point as well is we're currently in the PG era of WWE programming, so when I say Extreme Rules, get ready for the most tame Extreme Rules match you've ever seen. Drowning Pool's bodies is gone, and the new ECW theme is Saliva's Don't Question My Fart. <coughs> Sorry, heart. Which is a pretty good song, to be fair. Christ, Saliva must have made some royalties from WWE back in the day. How many songs did they have featured on its shows? All I'm going to say is it's not looking good from the show's intro video. Superstars featured in it include Goldust, Hurricane, Yoshi Tatsu, and Vladimir Kozlov. I think it would be fair to say that the show is lacking a bit in terms of star power. We could be in trouble, boys. Joey Styles and Taz have long since been replaced, and currently filling the commentary positions is Josh Matthews alongside Byron Boyk and the man dance Saxton. Looking at the arena appearance and cast at this point, it doesn't bear any semblance to the first episode. They might as well just call it Monday Night Raw Extended. It's essentially main event before main event was a thing. At least in the first episode, they tried to pretend like ECW was going to be somewhat like the original. Time for the opening match of the night. Let's see what we're getting to start the last ever ECW show. No, 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 not the fucking big show, please. It's a tag team title battle. Well, it's The Miz Show versus Yoshi Tatsu and Goldust. Byron Saxton says, What a way to kick off the last ever ECW. Which is basically the equivalent of trying to seem ecstatic about receiving socks or underpants for Christmas. Side note, Miz and Big Show's theme is an absolute monstrosity of a mashup. Essentially, it's just The Miz's theme with somebody pressing Big Show ad-libs every now and then. I came to play? No, I came to Big Show. Also, Yoshi Tatsu's theme is a bit of a bop, to be honest. It's an average match, nothing to write home about. Tatsu does a nice bottom rope pulling thing that I thought looked cool, but apart from that, I'd struggle to tell you anything else about the match. The ending is pretty dodgy. It's got to be one of the more questionable distracted ref spots. Charles Robinson is checking on Tatsu on the outside when the Big Show is only slightly to the left of him, punches gold dust in the gut to help Miz hit the skull crushing finale and get the pin. That was a pretty uninspiring start to our last ever ECW show, and boy have I got a spoiler for you. It's not going to get much better. I should also point out that since the top of the show, they haven't stopped banging on about NXT. NXT is a show that is replacing ECW, and they're not trying to hide the fact that they're ready to move on and couldn't give a shit about ECW. We go backstage to our current general manager, former TNA knockout champion Taryn Terrell, aka Tiffany during her WWE stint. Tiffany has got some words to say on the final ever episode. I'm sure she's going to do a speech about the rich history of the brand and its origins or something. Nope. She proceeds to bang on about NXT. Tiffany is then interrupted by Zack Ryder and his bird Rosa Mendez. Zack says that he doesn't know why he hasn't got the honour of competing in the last ever ECW match. I wouldn't exactly call it an honour, Zack. He says the match is extreme rules, so he can get involved and make his presence known if he wants to anyway. Alright, Cardona, calm down. Ooh, you're hard. Showing off. Back in the ring, WWE Hall of Famer Tony Atlas introduces the host of the Abraham Washington show, Abraham Washington. There's an original name for a show. Washington spouts on about a load of bollocks for a bit and tries to get some cheap heat by insulting the crowd. All while this is happening, Tony Atlas is laughing intermittently in the background at the host's observations, even when it don't make sense, and sometimes even when he hasn't said anything. This is absolute dross. I honestly don't even know what to say. I'm lost for words at how bad this is. Washington talks about how after ECW is finished, he's going to become a free agent. But he says it like it's a good thing. And Tony Atlas starts laughing, of course. He goes on to explain that SmackDown and Raw are going to need to dig deep into their pockets to sign him. Well, guess what? Neither of them did. And after watching this shit... I'm not surprised he went back to FCW. He mentions this being the last ever episode of ECW. And what does he do next? Yep, you guessed it. He starts talking about NXT. Washington says that he needs a big guest for the last ever ECW episode. 
So he spoke with Vince McMahon about securing a huge guest for the show. He gets up onto the sofa and announces himself. As you can probably guess, Tony Atlas starts laughing hysterically. He starts to interview himself when the gold standard Shelton Benjamin comes out to rescue us all from this total trash. Just kick his ass, Shelton, please. Shelton gets on the mic and tells us that Washington's show is unwatchable when he has a guest on it. So what makes him think anyone can watch it when he's the guest? I find it hard to argue with that statement. Vance Archer, not Lance Archer, makes his way down to the ring. Lance's WWE theme sounds like the soundtrack to me chasing a fly around my room at one in the morning. Archer tells Shelton that he better not be on the same show as him after ECW, otherwise he won't have a future. Abraham is worried about it kicking off and his furniture getting ruined. Tony is still laughing. Trent Beretta and Kalen Croft enter the fray. Trent says nobody cares what brand either of you lot end up on. The real thing on everyone's mind is where the Slammy Award winning team of the year is going to end up. Fucking hell, it must have been a shit year for tag team wrestling in WWE if Trent and Kalen won team of the year in 2010. Just a quick post edit note. What I think Trent actually meant was that they're going to win this year's Tag Team of the Year. But the way he said it on the episode was almost like they'd already won it. To be fair, it seems like a bit of an odd thing to strive for as a tag team. Wouldn't you want to go for Tag Team Gold, not a fucking Slammy Award? Vladimir Kozlov joins the party in the squared circle. He starts speaking Russian. The what chants ensue. Then Vance Archer pushes Kozlov and it all starts booting off. There goes Washington's deposit on that furniture. At the end of the scuffle, Shelton and Kozlov shake hands and form some sort of alliance. Right, okay. Thank fuck that's over. Next, they advertise NXT some more. Surprise, surprise. 25 minutes in and this has been a painful watch. Even a decent main event couldn't redeem this shit. Apart from the opening video package, which was about a minute long, there's been no callbacks to any of the brand's highlights over the past four years. I mean, that says it all really, doesn't it? I suppose they don't want to put anything in there about zombies, vampires and Kelly Kelly's tits. On to the main event, and if you're wondering how it's already that time, it's because the last 15 minutes of the show were filled with outside shots of the Kansas arena, a video package for the upcoming Elimination Chamber pay-per-view, and more rimming of WWE's latest and greatest show, NXT. ECW champion Christian makes his way down to the ring with a shopping cart with a trash can inside, with weapons inside said trash can. Christian cuts a promo before the match, stating that when he came back to WWE, some people said being on the ECW brand felt like a demotion. I wonder why they'd say that. But he says he never looked at it like that. ECW feels like home to him. Well, if that's the case, Vince just burnt your house down, mate. So put that in your pipe and smoke it. He gives a nod to hardcore legend Tommy Dreamer. He also says he's glad that he got to coach young talents like Yoshi Tatsu. Tonight, he fights for every ECW original that wanted those three letters to mean something. He will always be proud to have been an ECW champion. We even get the fans starting an ECW chant. It's a great promo from Christian, and I'd expect nothing less to be fair. He put respect on the ECW name and led by example of how you should send off a brand on its last show. To think he's the only one who even seemed to give a shit or make an effort on the last show is pretty bad. It cuts to a break and when they come back they advertise NXT. Again. Ezekiel Jackson makes his way down to the ring with William Regal. And we're off. It's a pretty slow start to the match. At one point Ezekiel gets knocked off the ring apron when Christian hits his knuckles with a kendo stick on the top row. Yep. You heard that right. Not exactly the blood and guts affair you'd be expecting from the name ECW. Not long into the match, Zack Ryder sneaks up on Christian and beats him up for all of two seconds before Christian hits him with a flapjack on a trash can. The ECW champ sends him out of the ring. Rosa Mendez then gets in the ring and slaps Christian in the mush. But have no fear, peeps. Our ECW general manager runs down the ramp to save the day by hitting her with a spear and then telling her and Ryder to sling their hook. The match continues. This has got to be the most PG version of an Extreme Rules match I've ever seen. It's absolute shite. Christian and Ezekiel haven't exactly got the best chemistry together in the ring as well. The match isn't bad per se, but it's slow, clunky and boring. William Regal gets chased down the ramp at one point by Christian. Christian thinks that's the last he's seen of Regal, but not much later Regal gets back in the ring and tries to take him out. Regal gets hit with a kill switch by Christian. When this happens, Ezekiel takes advantage and puts Captain Charisma through a table, and it's over. One, two, three. We got a new and last ECW World Champion. I'm not sure if that's an insult to Christian or Ezekiel, to be honest. It's shit for Christian because he doesn't get to be the last ever ECW World Champion, and it's shit for Ezekiel because he wins the title and drops it immediately. Before the end of the episode, they advertise NXT one last time. 
Of course they do. Well, fucking hell, that made the first ever ECW episode look like a Meltzer five-star classic compared to this. I actually feel bad about giving it one and a half stars now. Don't get me wrong, we established the first ECW episode was crap, but it was entertainingly crap. This was like watching paint dry. I can't begin to put into words how angry I am that I've lost 47 minutes of my life watching this pure cow dung. I remember tuning in and out of WWE between 2009 and 2012, and after watching this, I understand why. In 47 minutes, there wasn't one part of the show I was entertained by, albeit 20 minutes of the show were spent just licking NXT's chocolate starfish. And with that in mind, ECW's final episode is receiving the first no rating on the channel. How could I give a rating to a show that basically just promoted NXT for the majority of the episode? If you enjoyed this video, be sure to hit the like button and subscribe to the channel for more great content. What did you think of WWE during this period? Let me know in the comment section below. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you in the next one.